Alright guys, welcome to your 18th Ruby tutorial, and in this lesson, it's going to be a real quick video probably, because I just want to tell you guys about one thing, and that's how to extract the value of your loop encounter. So you know how I said in this last case scenario, where we started at zero, and I'm going to... St <coughs> could easily restart this tutorial without the sneeze, but you know what, I think I'm going to leave that in there. So anyways... In the last case scenario, what we did is we have a command like this. Now we started at 0, we went to 15, and we counted by 5. So pretty much our values that the computer saw were 0, 5, 10, and 15. And once we got to 15, it knew to stop. But what if we wanted to see the value each time, instead of just just little command right here? Well, let's go ahead and learn how to do that. The cool thing about Ruby is, unlike a lot of other programming languages, Ruby lets you store the current value in a variable using this little pipe symbol. Now again, this is the little thing above the enter key on your keyboard. It's the straight line that goes up and down. So let's go ahead and make a simple counting loop. So we will go 1 up to 10 or something like that. The values really don't matter. Now what I want is to see what number the loop is on every time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. However, if we just give it a basic command, then it's going to do the same command every time. So what we want to do first is we want to extract the variable, and I'm just going to put it in a variable called x. Now, the x is just a variable I made up, but you can name your guys variable anything you want. So now what we did is we are going to extract the value every time this loop is going to happen. So now that we have the value, well, let's just go ahead and print it out on the screen. So puts x. So now when I go ahead and hit enter, check it out. It says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So what it did is it looped from 1 to 10. Every time it looped, we stored that value in a variable called x. Now, again, like I said, I just named that variable x, but you can name it anything you want. The key here is whenever you want to extract a variable, make sure you put it in between those pipe signs. Whenever you do that, you're telling Ruby, hey, we want to get the value and store it in this variable right here. And then with that variable, you can do anything you want. You can add it to other variables. You can just print it out on the screen like you did. The world is your oyster. Go ahead and do anything you want with it. So now let me go ahead and show you guys another example that may clear things up. Say we have 0 and we want to go to 15 by 5s, like in the last time. Actually, we can just go ahead and change this one up right here. So instead of just stepping from 0 to 15 and it prints out something four different times, let's go ahead and extract the value from this one. So again, inside curly braces, the first thing we want to do is extract that value. So we use two pipe signs and we give it a variable name like bacon. Sounds like a good name. So now that we extracted the value and we stored it in a variable called bacon, let's just go ahead and print it out on the screen. So puts bacon. So now whenever we run this, we can clearly see that the values that the computer sees is 0, 5, 10, and 15. And then we can go up to our method and verify that... <clears throat> excuse me, verify that yes, indeed, we're starting at zero and we want to go to 15 by fives. So yes, our computer's working, Ruby's working properly, and we are good to go. So again, that is how you extract the value of a variable whenever you are looping. So hopefully you guys understand now. If you don't, just go ahead and uh, ask me on my forum, tnbforum.com. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.